Look, I know the American accent can be very intimidating. I'm gonna share with you a specific system to tackle any word of any size, to build the confidence you need to break through all barriers. Hey, I'm Gabriel from GB Voice Academy, your accent reduction instructor to get you that much closer to mastering the American accent. Subscribe to my YouTube channel so you get access to all of these very effective videos. Also check out the link to my five-star best-selling accent reduction course, as well as the other communication courses that I have. When we look at big, difficult words, we get intimidated. We see all of those letters and we don't even bother or we find an alternative word to dumb down our English because we think we need to. But if you followed my target map system, there is no word too big that you can't handle. Why don't we look through a few of these challenging big words, break them down and realize it's a lot easier than you think. And I challenge you to use these words in your everyday. Don't be intimidated. Try it. You'll be so impressed with yourself. Let's look at the first word. I know it's intimidating, but give it a shot. Flabbergasted. Flabbergasted. If you break it down into syllables, flabbergasted, all you gotta do is master each syllable sound. And then you have to find out where the emphasis is. And in this case, it's that first ah. Flabbergasted. See how it just flows right out of you when we break it down into pieces like that? This is when someone feels or shows an intense shock, surprise. I was flabbergasted by that amazing presentation. Stay tuned because at the end of this video, we're gonna put all of these words that I'm teaching you into structured sentences to see if you're able to retain what I taught you. Cumulative. Let's break that down into syllables. Cumulative. A lot of is in there, right? And where's the emphasis? On that first ooh. Cumulative. Increasing or growing by accumulation or successive additions. We acquired a cumulative knowledge by reading this book. Excellent. This is a word you hear a lot as well. Peers. This is pretty simple. It's just a P into an E into an ER. Peers, and it's just one syllable. Emphasis on the E. Peers. This could be a coworker or someone in your industry that stands equal to what you do. I look for the acknowledgement of my peers. Candor. So there's only two syllables here. And der. Emphasis on the first one. Candor. Straightforward honesty or frankness in speech or expression. I really appreciate your candor when discussing this subject. Callous. Similar to candor, we have two separate syllables. Callous. Callous. Showing or having an insensitive or cruel disregard for others. Those were very callous remarks. See, once you know the meaning and how to pronounce them, use them. I challenge you, go out there, take one of these words, throw it out there. Show people what you can do with confidence. Fabricate. Fabricate. Three syllables with the emphasis on the a. Ah. Fabricate. To make up for the purpose of deception. He fabricated all those false rumors. Makes sense when you put it all together like that, huh? Hypocrisy. Let's break that down. Hypocrisy. Emphasis on the ah. Hypocrisy. A practice of claiming to have moral standards or beliefs to which one's own behavior does not conform. There's a lot of hypocrisy in the office. We know a lot of people like that, don't we? Adapt. 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 Two syllables. Emphasis on the a. Ah. Adapt. Make something suitable for a new use or purpose. We must adapt to the new environment. Good. You're doing great. This is a big one that trips up a lot of my clients. Circumstances. How many syllables? Circumstances. Four, right? putting emphasis on the er, circumstances, a fact or condition connected with or relevant to an event or action. These are very unique circumstances. 
Go to doing great, couple more, and then stay tuned for the quiz. This one trips a lot of people out because it does not sound like how it's spelled. Curious. That O-U is gone. It's just three syllables. Cur-ry-is. Emphasis on that first syllable. Curious. Those R's are so powerful that they often kill those vowels. Eager to know or learn something. I'm curious to know about his habits. Bewilderment. How many syllables in this? Bewilderment. And where are we putting the emphasis? On the second one. Bewilderment. Bewilderment. A feeling of being perplexed or confused. I was dazed and confused with bewilderment. Excellent job. Now, let's put this to the test. Why don't we mix all of these new terminologies up, put them in structured sentences, so we could see where they fit in. Repeat after me, and if I'm speaking too fast, by all means, please pause the video and repeat. And there's no reason to be intimidated because we did the work. Nice and slow. I am flabbergasted by the cumulative knowledge of my peers. And you notice that there's a rhythm to that. I am flabbergasted, that's one section, by the cumulative knowledge, that's another section, of my peers. Because this is the intimidating thing. We see all of these words, we start to get nervous, but when you break it down into digestible portions, it's a lot easier. We've broken down these big words, and now we're breaking down sections within this sentence to make it absorbable. One more time, a little more in real time. I am flabbergasted by the cumulative knowledge of my peers. A little more in real time. I am flabbergasted by the cumulative knowledge of my peers. Even when I'm reading in real time this fast, I'm still not flabbergasted. I'm still not breaking the barriers and going fast and moving right through it. I'm still paced. That is the word, pacing. People associate fast English with speed, but it's not. When you hear great speakers speak what seems to be faster, you realize that if you were to measure it on a metronome, it's just paced really well. And this rhythm breakdown that I'm teaching you is exactly that. Once that pacing is locked into your body, you'll have the time you need to process all of this information. Good, next one. I appreciate your candor regarding my callous remarks. So we split that up into two sections, didn't we? I appreciate your candor, that's one section, regarding my callous remarks. That's a second section, a little more in real time. I appreciate your candor regarding my callous remarks. And now a little faster, but notice that I still maintain that rhythm. I appreciate your candor regarding my callous remarks. The rhythm, the pacing is still intact. A lot of people, when they speak their native language, they speak very fast. But when trying to speak proper, articulate American English, we need to maintain the pacing. Next one. We must adapt to the various unimaginable circumstances. Good. Where are those breaks? We must adapt. Adapt to what? to the various unimaginable circumstances. You hear that very specific pacing? A little more in real time, but keep the pacing. We must adapt to the various unimaginable circumstances. Sounding better already. Stick with it, you're almost done. Curious decisions have me shaking my head in bewilderment. Let's break that sentence down. Curious decisions, that's one group, have me shaking my head, that's another group, in bewilderment. You hear those three islands of groups? Again in real time, but keep the pacing. Curious decisions 
have me shaking my head in bewilderment. Do you see what I'm doing? It's like I'm conducting. All of this is very musical. That is, if you want to speak great, articulate, leveled up American English. Because we could totally break it down. Curious decisions had me shaking my head in bewilderment. That's American as well, but we don't want that. We want to level up our speaking. Here's a little something I'm going to share with you that I tell my clients. We read English literature, like from the great English authors like Oscar Wilde, in an American accent. Because then when you match that American accent with that elegant rhythm of the English language from English authors, it levels up your English. You sound more articulate, more intelligent. It's a little secret I have, so it's a good thing you stuck around. Get one of these words a day, put it out there, try it out, be confident. Keep up with this and other videos on my YouTube channel to give you just that. Mm -hmm.